Throughout my life, I've witnessed the direct impact of the place where we live on our well-being and our health. In my mother's hometown, Oruro, Bolivia, people travel all night on dirt roads in hope of a day's work at the mines. In Mexico City, where I grew up, people spend hours in dense traffic commuting between multiple jobs. And in Leuven, Belgium, where I did a master's degree, people's commute to work is just a short bicycle ride. Increasingly, living a long, healthy life does not only depend on the exercise that you do or the food that you eat, but also on the actual geographic location of your home. If you think about it, the social and the physical environment of your neighborhood may severely limit the choices and the resources available to you. For example, your motivation to exercise can be constrained by living in a neighborhood that lacks safe areas for exercise. Researchers have looked into this and they have found that the social, the economic, and the physical features of your neighborhood are associated with individuals' mortality, disability, mental health, and in particular, to cardiovascular disease. Cardiovascular disease is a substantial public health burden, both in terms of health and costs, in the United States. In 2011, it was the underlying cause of death of 31% of all deaths. More specifically, hypertension and obesity are two major risk factors of cardiovascular disease. More than a third of Americans are obese and about a third have hypertension. Yet, there is very limited research that looks at the whole spectrum of an individual's geographic trajectory and their increasing risk of cardiovascular disease. So that's where my research comes in. In my doctorate studies in epidemiology, I'm seeking to uncover the long-term impact of the place where we live on our risk of obesity and hypertension. I am examining how the place where people were born, where they grew up, and the, when, where they are living now as adults might explain the risk of hypertension and obesity. I aim to look at childhood as a critical stage in the life course, where healthy behaviors or norms are settled that may extend into adulthood. My hypothesis is that living in a neighborhood with lower deprivation during early childhood will be associated with a slower development of cardiovascular disease risk. To do this, I am using innovative tools that allow me to do spatial analysis to analyze the relationship between public health data and the environment. Geographic information systems allows me to geocode individuals and link their data to environmental features. Advanced statistical modeling allows me to assess the longitudinal association between individual health trajectories and environmental features. My team and I have created multiple maps in which we display participants' location at birth, at childhood, and at adulthood. And we have linked each of our locations at each time point with environmental features like access to green space or the neighborhood socioeconomic status. I have done a lot of coding, a lot of data management and data analysis, and I'm working with faculty all across disciplines. I'm learning from geographers, sociologists, clinicians, statisticians, cardiovascular and environmental epidemiologists. I see my work as an interdisciplinary collaboration with researchers who share the goal of improving cities and human health. My research matters because results from my thesis may provide insight into critical stages in our life when individual and community actions can meaningfully improve our health and reduce neighborhood health disparities. Moreover, research of this type may shed light into urban planning and designing cities in order to improve population health. So that one day, people in Bolivia, in Mexico, in Belgium, in the United States, or anywhere else in the world may know better about how their neighborhood is affecting their health. Thank you.